Hello class, welcome. We're working on chapter 19 in uh, Intermediate Accounting for Income Tax. Now, this is an accounting chapter that relates to, you know, one of our biggest expense, which is income tax. So, this is kind of the notes part of it. Um, I'd like to follow this up with some uh, examples um, to try to show you how to do some of the, the problems on it. But it really does help to understand, you know, what you're trying to do and uh, there's deferred tax assets and deferred tax liabilities. So let's get started on this, and then I'll try to come back with a um, another video on some some problems. Okay, so the first step is what's the basics uh, of accounting for income tax? You know we have two sets of rules. We have taxable income, which is the tax rules, like the tax laws, the Internal Revenue Code, the regulations, and then we have the accounting or book income, which is all GAAP. Now, we're looking at how we handle the financial accounting of it, how we handle it for financial reporting. Now, a lot of times they're very similar. Income um, in the financial statements is taxed then for um, tax purposes, but there are some differences. And so here are just four differences. There may be others, but these are really common. Uh, one difference might be depreciation. Now, on the book, this is our financial statements, this column right here. On the book financial statements, we might have straight line depreciation. Well, on tax, you use an accelerated method that's very similar to double declining balance called MAKERS, the Modified Accelerated Cost Recovery System, MAKERS. So, there's going to be a difference in year one and year two of what the depreciation is on the books, on the financial statements, and on our tax return. There are just two sets of, of rules. Also, sometimes revenue, you might have an installment method uh, on tax, and then on the books, you would accrue that, and it becomes revenue in one year, and it's not revenue until um, the installment happens in five years or so, you know, along each year for five years. Warranty costs, uh, the tax method is when it's paid, and the book method is in the period of sale because of the matching concept. And um, one we've, we've dealt with is bad debt expense. Remember, on our books, we have to do the allowance method, which puts it in the year of sale. So if you have sales in 2020, you need to have bad debt expense in 2020. Tax says, no, you can't do that. It has to be a direct write-off method which puts the expense in 2021. So that's a little bit different. Now, all these probably are going to be temporary differences. So temporary differences, it happens for a year or two or three or four or five, whatever. And so, for example, makers and straight line will give the same total depreciation over the life of the asset, so five years or ten years or whatever. So we're going to have a temporary difference for that particular uh, item for several years. Now, if it's a taxable amount, it's going to increase taxable income, and a deductible amount is going to decrease taxable income. All right, so we'd rather have, um, you know, deductible amounts. We want tax income to um, uh, decrease on our tax return, right? When the book amount of an asset or liability differs from the tax basis, this is the temporary difference. This is future tax effects on taxable income must be recorded, and we're going to call this a future tax liability or a future tax asset. Now, normally you'd like, rather have an asset than a liability, but here you'd rather have the deferred tax liability because you pay it later. If you pay it ahead of time, then you have a deferred tax asset. So let's keep going on this. So if you have deferred tax that will result in net taxable amounts in future years, if you've saved taxes now and you'll pay more taxes in the future, that's called a deferred tax liability. Give you an example. Here's how the uh, little journal entry would work. The Dutch company has a taxable temporary difference of six million. At the end of the year, the tax rate's 40%. The deferred tax liability is six million times 40%. And let's assume our current taxes payable are 1.8 million. So we're gonna recognize this is on our financial statements, right? So this is a def uh, income tax expense, 
and the numbers we get are going to be income tax payable, 1.8 million, that's given. Deferred tax liability, that's the 6 million times the 40%. So we add these two together, and we're going to get uh, 4.2 million. So our expense is 4.2 million, even though we only owe 180,000, because in future years we're going to pay that 2.4 million. So this is a deferred tax liability. We would like this situation. We want this situation rather than the opposite, where we're paying more than what our expense is. That would be a deferred tax asset. So let's be clear here. Taxable amounts lead to deferred tax liabilities. Deductible amounts lead to deferred tax assets. So it's a little bit tricky. Just be careful uh, thinking about what side you're on. Is it going to be future taxes go up or, or you're paying taxes and your future taxes will be less. So let's flip it and talk about a deferred tax asset. Deductible amounts that arise in the future because of temporary differences should be recognized as a deferred tax asset. Deferred tax asset is the amount of taxes that will be refundable in future years as a result of these deductible amounts. All right, since it's an asset, we could have a valuation account. The deferred tax asset only matters if you have future taxes that you get to offset. Um, so let's look at an example here. Similar example, we have the Reagan company has a deductible temporary difference rather than taxable temporary difference, right? Of 3 million, 42% is the tax rate. So we're going to record a deferred tax asset of 3 million times 42%. So we're going to debit a deferred tax asset of 1,260,000. Let's assume our current tax is payable based on our tax return. That's the number we just have to be given uh, in financial accounting. So it's called income tax payable here. And so our expense is only 940,000. The 2.2 million minus the 1.26 million we have 940000 is our income tax expense. We have paid more taxes, and we're going to save taxes in the future. So we don't really want it this way. We don't want to pay more now. Do you want to pay taxes now or later? I'll wait. No, you want to take, pay taxes later, right? So you'd rather have a deferred tax liability. This, you pay taxes ahead of time, and you're going to save more later. All right, so... If you have a, an allowance, if you have an allowance and you think, hey, 200000 is not going to be collected, then we're going to debit the income tax expense of 200000 and the allowance for the deferred tax asset of 200000 We're not going to have that um, tax asset. Now, what kind of account is the allowance account? It's a contra account, um, and it's deducted from the deferred tax asset. All right, now the formula for the income tax expense or the income tax benefit, just simple income tax payable or the refundable part, plus or minus the change in deferred income taxes gives us our total income tax expense or income tax benefit. All right, let's talk about the idea of temporary and permanent. We've talked about temporary, but let's kind of keep talking about it because this is important. If the tax basis of the asset or liability and the financial statement uh, reported number differ the, and the difference will reverse in future years, that's a temporary difference. So it's a timing issue. So depreciation is a good example always of the timing difference. Now, these are terms, I don't think you really need to know these. If this is helpful, you have a, a difference at the beginning called uh, originating difference. You have differences at the end, reversing. Um, I don't think I've ever used those terms before. That's just a little FYI for you if you're just trying to help, help you learn a little bit. Now, there's such a thing as permanent differences. So at this point, we're not going to have um, these deferred tax assets or liabilities. Permanent differences do not cause these deferred tax assets or liabilities. It could be included in financial income, but it's never taxed, or it's included in tax, but it's not in financial income. For example, municipal bond interest. Remember, remember, municipal bonds are when a state 
or a county or a city or a school district or a utility district um, issue bonds. And one of the things that the federal government allows for federal income tax purposes is the interest is not taxable. And so that, that means the city of Nashville can issue bonds at a cheaper rate because someone could own those bonds and it's not taxable for federal income tax. So you're willing to accept 6% return rather than 7% return. So it means that city and states and municipal authorities can uh, borrow money at a little bit cheaper rate because it's not taxable. Now, it's definitely income on our income statement. So it's just a permanent difference that will never reverse and that's just the way it is. So that does not give rise to a deferred tax asset or deferred tax liability. Life insurance. One of the things that happens if you have, especially a publicly traded company uh, or a medium-sized company uh, or larger, you might have life insurance on the key executives. And so if your key executive um, passes away, then your company gets um, a life insurance benefit. Now, this kind of sounds strange at first, but one of the things that happens, it, it costs thousands of dollars to to search and find a CEO or CFO or whatever. So maybe they have a $1 million policy that reimburses the company. And so that is paid for to try to uh, have hire a search firm or, or try to hire and train um, a, a new executive. So for tax purposes, that's not taxable, but for income uh, purposes, for the income statement, it is on, on our books, it is income. So that's a permanent difference. Now, fines and penalties, it is an expense on our books, uh, but you do not get that as a deductible. You cannot say, um, because I was going to a board meeting, that's a business, um, then I was speeding, I got a, a speeding ticket, so therefore that's a business expense. You cannot deduct that on your tax return. Fines and penalties, you cannot deduct. So that's a permanent difference. All right. Normally, to com compute this deferred tax asset or liability, you use the current tax rate. However, if future taxes are already enacted in, into law, then we use those. So let's say then the future taxes are going to be 30%, 25%, and 20%. You use those current rates. All right, number three. There is a provision called loss carrybacks and loss carry forwards. So if you have a net operating loss or NOL, if you have a year when you have revenue, let's say of a hundred thousand and your deduct deductions are more than a hundred thousand, you have a net operating loss. And so you don't have to pay any tax this year, but it used to be you could carry that back, that 20,000 and get a refund from a prior year where you pay taxes. Well, Interesting thing here, um, so the rule is, in general, we don't have any carrybacks anymore. Um, the Tax Cuts and Jobs Acts of, of 2017 eliminated the carryback. So according to the textbook, there's no carryback provision. But because of the pandemic, um, there was a bill signed into law in March called the Corona virus aid relief and economic security or cares congress is so nice they they show that they care by issuing bills that say cares um anyway so the the bill allows nols for five years if you have tax uh, nols for 2018 2019 or 2020. now we're going to assume that there's no carryback i'm just giving you that because that's the official stance so if somebody said there's no uh, NOL carryback, you say, well, actually, because of coronavirus, yes, we do. It looks like this is not going to um, continue. So just assume that there's no carryback provision. Chapter 19 assumes no carryback. The problems will have no carrybacks. So it um, looks like this is a temporary law for the pandemic and will not continue. So this is just a little uh, fun fact for you. If someone is asking you about this and you say, well, actually, there's a little bit of uh, time period where there is a NOL carryback, but for problems in our book, no. But you can do a carry forward. So let's say you have a net, net operating loss, a NOL 
of 20,000 or 200,000, you can carry that forward. So the next 200,000 of taxable income, you don't have to pay tax on it. So that's a bit a nice benefit only if you have future tax uh, taxable amounts. Now, let's think about the balance sheet. We're going to report deferred taxes on the balance sheet as assets and liabilities. So, they're classified as either current or non-current based on the related asset or liability. And so let's uh, kind of have some rules here. So if it is current or non-current, we figure that out, it's going to be the same as the related asset or liability that it's based on or on the reversal date. So if we think it's going to happen three years in the future, then it is long-term, not current, or non-current versus current. Now, the current assets, all this means is you take all the current asset, uh, ta uh, current deferred tax assets minus all the current deferred tax liabilities. You net them out, and if the assets are larger, then then you have a current tax asset. Excuse me, or if you have um, an, a liability, then it's a current tax liability. If you have non-current amounts, you add them all up. Subtract out the assets minus the liabilities, and what you have left is either a non-current asset or a long-term liability. On the income statement, we're going to allocate the tax expense to continue operations, discontinue operations, extraordinary items, prior period adjustments. We'll allocate along the way, and this is called intra-period tax allocation. Now, this is just a term you need to know, but um, this is an appendix, it gets to be a long problem. We're not going to do a problem in that. Um, so anyway, this is called the asset liability approach, where you have a current tax asset or liability um, based on temporary differences, and you measure it. I think I've kind of said all this. This is just kind of based on the asset liability method, and it's based on either the character of the asset liability it relates to or based on the time that it's expected to reverse. Only temporary differences have deferred tax assets or liabilities. Okay, so we I think we're finished for this portion. I'll try to work on some uh, problems for you. One thing we're trying to do on this one is I'm trying to do lots of little brief exercises rather than uh, bigger problem uh, exercises or problems. I think that'll be helpful if you do lots of little ones. That's more related to the um, the exam questions. Also, you ought to look at the study guide. So I put the study guide last couple of days. So the study guide for chapter 19 is on our shared folder. I think that's going to be helpful to do extra little problems and some multiple choice and you have all right there. You, you should be in great shape. All right. Thanks for watching.